How's it going, everybody? Uh, so today we are going to be shifting gears from fiscal policy uh, to looking at monetary policy. So with fiscal policy, we're looking at how the federal government uses taxes and government spending in order to influence our economy. Well, with monetary policy, we're looking at the Federal Reserve uh, and specifically how the Federal Reserve uses money to influence our economy. All right, so today we're just going to look at money in particular uh, and the structure of our Federal Reserve. Then we'll start talking about the tools that they use in order to influence our economy. So the key thing with money here is that it makes trade easier. It makes it to where we don't have to barter anymore. And so money is very good for me because my skill will be very hard to trade for, right? So, uh, you know, my, my job is to, to teach economics. And so uh, I get paid an equivalent value to that. You know, the, the county decides how much money that's worth and they, they pay me that amount. Then I can take that to Chick-fil-A and get a chicken sandwich there. Uh, and so that, that money makes that trade easier. Because really when I go to Chick-fil-A, I'm trading uh, my teaching for their food. We just use the money as the middleman. All right, otherwise, I'd have to go to the drive-thru and hope that somebody there needs to learn economics for about five or 10 minutes. And in return, they'll give me some food. So not a really efficient way to do it. The money makes it easier though. All right, so there's a couple things that are needed for money to be effective. Or, sorry, effective. First off, oh, it has to be commonly accepted. We call this a medium of exchange. Think about that word median, like the median on our road, it's the middle. All right, so a medium of exchange just means that we all accept that it has value. If you saw $10 lying on the ground, then we all know that, that $10 is gonna have value, even though it's just a little strip of paper. All right, secondly, all right, it has to be divisible. We have to be able to break it up, right? We all know that you know, 20 nickels makes a dollar, or four quarters make a dollar, or, you know, 10 ones make a 10. So we, we could break it down, that way we could buy expensive things like a car, or cheaper things like a gumball, right? So we have to be able to break up that currency. And finally, it has to hold value over time, right? That I could put $100 into my savings account today, and it'll be worth about $100 tomorrow. All right, but that hasn't always been the case, right? If you think back to US history, you might have learned about the Whiskey Rebellion. This is right after the, uh, the American Revolution, right, when a bunch of corn farmers took over their local governments because of this really high whiskey tax. The farmers argued, well, we can't just sell the corn over onto the coast because the corn will go bad by the time it gets to market. So we have to turn it into whiskey, and we use that whiskey as a currency. All right, and so it has to be able to store that value over a long period of time. All right, so what I want to do now is to look at the kind of structure of this Federal Reserve. So the, the main thing you need to know is that the Federal Reserve is the bank for banks. So if a bank is running low on money, they'll borrow that money from the Federal Reserve. So let's say the fair is in town, and you go to Bank of America or Wells Fargo, and you take out 30 or $40. But let's say thousands of people do that to go to the fair. Well, then those banks might start to run low on money, in which case they'll ask the Federal Reserve to send them more. The Federal Reserve, which the local, our district bank is in Atlanta, will send down an armored car full of money. And the, they'll lend that out to the banks. So the Federal Reserve is the bank for banks, if banks need money. And so you have these seven board of governors that oversee the entire banking industry. We call these the board of governors, right, and they're appointed by the president. They serve one really long 14 year term, and every two years we appoint a new one. Now let's talk about the benefits of this. So the Federal Reserve is the organization most influential in our economy. An easy way to think about it, fiscal policy would be like if you're sick and you go get antibiotics, right? You might take those antibiotics over seven or eight days and eventually it'll make you feel better. All right, the Federal Reserve is like getting a booster shot, right? It takes an immediate effect. This Board of Governors has a lot of tools that they can use in order to immediately influence our economy. So they've got a lot of power. So again, they serve these long 14 year terms and it's nice because it's not political. They're appointed by the president, sure, but they never can be appointed again. So once they're in office, they don't have to do what the president says anymore. Jerome Powell, our, our current chairman of the board of governors, all right, like within a month or two of being in office, Donald Trump asked him to lower down interest rates and he said, nope, that's not what's best for our economy, not doing it. And so there's no one kind of hanging over their head uh, and it's not a popularity contest. They don't run for election, so they don't want to make anybody happy. They're just gonna do what they think is best for the economy. Secondly, 
it's nice that they serve these really long terms because it lets them build up experience, right? We're in the middle of this recession now, and half of our board of governors were there during the last recession. So they kind of know what to do now. And lastly, it makes it to where it's not super political, right? So Donald Trump's been in office for three years, so he's got two board of governor members on there now. Donald, or Barack Obama was there for eight years, so he's got four people that he appointed. And George Bush still has a person on the board, on the, uh, this board of governors from 14 years ago. All right, so uh, because of that, it's a good balance of Republicans and Democrats. It's not political, right? And so these guys are gonna, or these people are gonna do what they think is best for our economy. All right, and this is kind of looking at the structure of our Federal Reserve here. At the bottom, we have us, everyday people. And then we have our banks that we use. So I use Marshall and Credit Union and Bank of America. But this would also be Wells Fargo or Citibank, maybe Federal, all of our local banks. They all report back to these 12 district banks that we're going to look at in just a second, who report to those Board of Governors. So it's kind of like a hierarchy that we have here with this Federal Reserve System. All right, so to look at the way that we break up these districts. All right, so our country is broken up into 12 different districts. Each one has a district bank that's in charge of it. So ours is in Atlanta, and that Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank is in charge of Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, Alabama, and Louisiana. All right, so they have a, a big geographical area that they're in charge of. All right, and this is nice because, all right, that way our, our economy of the southeastern United States can be run on a more local level. So we call this the Federal Advisory Council, the 12 district bank presidents that all report back to those Board of Governors in, in Washington, D.C. All right, and that's nice because the state of the economy in Georgia is gonna look very different than Arizona or Alaska. And so we want this Board of Governors to know what things are looking like here. So our district bank president from Atlanta, they'll send reports up to Washington, D.C. and say, all right, this year in Miami, they're doing a lot of construction. All right, agriculture in Georgia is doing really well, but the fishing industry is doing very poorly. So they'll give them reports of what the day-to-day the -day operations look like in these different regions. All right, and another cool thing is if you look at a dollar bill, all right, you'll see that in the corner of the bill, all right, it has a number. So like my dollar bill right here has a two on it. That corresponds with which district uh, this dollar bill is printed. So this dollar bill is printed in New York. If that had a four on it, that means that it would be printed in Cleveland. All right, and so the, the mint is what produces this money, but they're, they're controlled by the Federal Reserve. So this Federal Advisory Council are these 12 district bank presidents that all report back to the Board of Governors. All right, the last thing I wanna look at is this Federal Open Market Committee. The FOMC is the one that, that controls the day-to-day -day operations of the Fed. And it's made up of those seven Board of Governor members and a rotating crew of those Federal Advisory Councils, those district bank presidents. All right, so these 12 members do a lot of different things. They set interest rates, they tell banks the day-to-day -day operations that they have to do, um, they buy and sell government bonds. All of those, as we'll see going into next week, have a very immediate impact on the economy. All right, and so these 12 members have much more influence over our economy than the president does or Congress does. Because whereas the president and Congress might pass a new budget, that budget's not gonna take effect until next year. If they pass a tax bill, that's not gonna take effect until next year. So their response is much more delayed, whereas the Federal Reserve, they can change things by the end of the day. All right, I wanna leave it off here for now, but before you switch over, uh, for all of the people that are diligent in watching these videos, I very much appreciate you. All right, and so what I'm going to say to you now is if you want to email me with just like a little smiley face or a hi, uh, I'm going to say you don't want to do the vocab quiz this week. Or sorry, it'll go next week. But I really want to reward the people that are watching the videos. And so, again, if you just want to email me with a smiley face or a hi or I watched your video today, thank you. I uh, appreciate that because not everybody is. Uh, and I'll give you 100 for the, the quiz next week as a thank you. Uh, so I'll talk to you guys soon on Google Meet. Thanks.